Joining us right now, Texas Senator John Cornyn. Senator Cornyn, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us here this morning. Glad to be with you, Matt. Uh, Senator, you uh, you just said uh, Wednesday that you think Paul Ryan would make a great president. Do you know something we don't? Is he going to run? Uh, I don't know anything you don't know, uh, but I think he's uh, he's one of the stars of the Republican Party. He's obviously a very intelligent, uh, innovative thinker, and when it comes to trying to come up with solutions to the big problems that confront our country, I think he's one of our leaders. So uh, I'm very impressed by him. But having said that, Matt, I'm not promoting one candidate over another in the primary. I'm going to wait like a lot of other folks in my party for this to sort itself out and, of course, get behind whoever our nominee is. Uh, Senator, uh, you have been uh, very vocal, and rightfully so, uh, over the latest uh, debacle from this uh, fast and furious uh uh, ATF, uh, you know, fallout of guns uh, being found at crime scenes. And now we're talking about possibly promoting, uh, some of the folks from uh, within uh, the ATF that are responsible for this. Uh, explain to me, Senator, how this even happens. Well, as you know, this whole uh, boneheaded idea came from apparently a Phoenix office of the Bureau of Alcohol and uh, Tobacco and uh, Firearms. And uh, the idea was when uh, straw purchasers uh, bought guns at, uh, uh, from, uh, from various sporting goods outlets in Texas, Arizona, and elsewhere, that uh, when they called the ATF and said, hey, I think something fishy is going on here, it looks like there's uh, bulk purchases that might end up in the hands of the drug cartels, they were told by the law enforcement agency, go ahead and let them walk. And uh, unfortunately, in December 2010, a U.S. Uh, law enforcement agent was killed using one of these uh, very weapons that had walked under this uh, misguided program. So I think the basic problem is that, uh, you know, in Washington today, the thing that drives people the craziest is that a lack of accountability. In other words, the people who made the decision need to be held responsible. And just the arrogance that says, you know, we don't have to tell you what, uh, who knew what when. But it's pretty clear to me that uh, the attorney general either knew or he should have known mm-hmm. of this program. And uh, just the, the stonewalling is unacceptable. Texas Senator John Cornyn joining us here this morning. And, uh, Senator, if you'd be kind enough to hang on, uh, when we come back, I want to get your thoughts on uh, Governor Perry real quick uh, running sure. uh, and uh, also uh, the president going on vacation. Seems like he's running, too, but uh, they're both kind of running in different directions, and we'll get your thoughts on that. Senator, uh, did uh, did Governor Perry uh, call and, and get your blessing or, or ask for uh, any advice uh, as he took to the national stage running for president? Oh, Governor Perry doesn't need to ask for my uh, blessing or my permission. Uh, you know, I think he's got a great story to tell, and it's the Texas story. And if people wonder whether policy makes a difference in terms of uh, employment, in terms of uh, growth of the economy and opportunity, all they have to do is look at the Texas model, which he has led for uh, about 10 years now. And uh, we need to make Washington more like Texas. Certainly don't need to make uh, Texas more like Washington. And I can't think of any better person to tell that story than Governor Perry. Senator Cornyn, uh, one final question here. We've been talking this morning about uh, President Obama, the vacation to Martha's Vineyard, the extreme disconnect, as far as I can see, uh, with the president and uh, not, not only the American people, but in particular, the African-American community. Uh, and there's been, uh, as you know, some very vocal pushback. Maxine Waters would be one and certainly a lot of folks here in the Houston area. Uh, has the president become tremendously disconnected from the American people and in particular from the African-American community that helped put him in that? office? Well, I would defer to others about any disconnect with the African-American community, but I will tell you, it seems like he's uh, just about given up uh, on the high unemployment and our, and our slow growth of our economy, and he seems like he's kind of out of ammunition. And I think part of the problem is, Matt, he is, you know, he's been uh, rigid in his ideology about how to get people back to work, and he believes as some uh, liberal economists believe that the only way to do that is for the federal government to grow bigger and spend more money. Unfortunately, we don't have that money. We're borrowing the money from our the next generation, and it's creating yet another crisis, a potential sovereign debt crisis in this country. So I think he's about out of ammunition. I don't begrudge him a few days off, but uh, I think uh, what we need is a fresh look at how to get the private sector back to work. And again, I think the Texas model would provide a good example of how to do that. Texas Senator John Cornyn joining us uh, this morning. Senator, I appreciate the time. As always, have a good weekend. Look forward to uh, sitting down with you over lunch sometime and uh, picking your brain a bit. 
That'd be great. Thanks, Matt.